we are considering the nomination of a deputy to the office of special prosecutor. And Mr. Speaker, my study reveals that throughout the world, corruption is facilitated by three important variables. Greed, opportunity, and need. That's what facilitates corruption. Corruption remains an integral part of Ghanaian public life. Even though unjustifiably, Mr. Speaker, the blame is squarely placed on political office holders, as if it's only ministers or MPs because of our opportunity to supervise state resources that we can be associated with the conduct of bribery and corruption. Declaration of assets, Mr. Speaker, is an important ingredient to measure income against persons earning and whether your earning is commensurate, commensurate to your income. Mr. Speaker, I have argued, and it was before you as chair of the appointments committee, that probably Ghana must now look at reviewing our legislation, criminalizing unexplained wealth, and shifting the burden of proof on unexplained wealth to the accused person. Because I know the deputy leader is a very good practitioner of criminal law. And he's read the Kedaku very well. And he knows the better. Proof beyond shadow of doubt or reasonable doubt. The onus is always on the state. But in fighting graft and white collar crime, as you can permit me, like this matter of Cecilia Daba, a matter may be immoral, but not necessarily unlawful or illegal. But where does the law itself drive its power from? Morality. A conduct may be immoral and ethical, but not necessarily unlawful. But I maintain, I maintain, because of the high office we all occupy, that when you engage in conduct that raises eyebrow, this parliament must rise up to the occasion, review our criminal legislation, and review, which has always been the position of the majority leader, the Honorable Osai Chimensa also. Our asset declaration regime must be reviewed in total. Nobody knows who has what, who got what, how did you get it, nobody knows. So we have to make our asset declaration more responsive. But Mr. Speaker, when members of parliament or ministers of state engage in conduct that are unethical, not necessarily unlawful, the public trust wins. The public confidence in us wins. And the public confidence that we will supervise strictly and control the public first wins.